first to enter the den is fitness fanatic Rob Thorpe. I absolutely love exercise. I'm very cognizant of health, wellness, fitness. It's a huge part of my life. And to put an extra zip in his step today, Rob's been sampling the very goods he's asking for an investment in. I've taken my product this morning. I'm feeling sharp, I'm feeling energized, and I'm ready to go. Rob's hoping to give his business a boost too by bagging a dragon. And there's one in particular very much on his radar. Vitamins. Oh, this should be interesting. Tej has a vitamin empire and great retail connections, and he could be particularly powerful for my brand. Hello, dragons. I'm Rob Thorpe, and I'm the founder of Vite. We're a functional nutrition brand, and we help students and busy professionals improve their performance and their productivity. We're best known as a brand for our nootropic line, Vite Brain, which is currently available in capsules, drink mixes, and soon-to-be snack bars. For any of you that don't know what a nootropic is, it's an ingredient that can enhance cognitive function, so memory, reaction time, and mental energy. We hope, with this line, to be the first brand that can bring the benefits of nootropics to the mass market. We've been selling Vite for 18 months, during which time we have generated £160,000 in revenue. And I'm here today to pitch for £45,000 in exchange for a 10% equity stake in Vite. And now I'd like to get some samples out to you and answer any questions that you have. Supplements to improve mental performance is the business brainwave of London-based entrepreneur Rob Thorpe. So if you'd like to take a tray and then one of the tubs. He's asking for £45,000 in return for 10% of his company. The caffeine profile in any of these is about the same as a home-brewed coffee. Peter Jones is first to quiz the MD on a mission to optimise the mind. Well, firstly, well done. You know, you've got a seemingly a business here. The drink, is that made out of the powder from yes, here? Yes, it is, yeah. So inside there, there's 30 servings. Just add it to water? Yep. OK. And it's fairly competitive, isn't it? There's a lot of these types of products on the market. Uh, no, not in this niche. I mean, there's a lot of health products on the market. Um, what we intend to do is be the first brand to bring nootropics into the supermarket, health food stores and local convenience stores. OK, so can you give me the last 12 months of sales? Yeah, so 105,000 in revenue. Uh, gross profit was 45,000 and we are net 5,000 for the year. OK, and what did you do before this? I was working very long hours as a financial trader and I started to research what I could implement in my own diet to improve my performance during that time. And then you've given that up completely to do this? Completely, yeah. Wow. And, and at the moment, um, how many hours a week are you spending on this? Five days a week. And that's not an eight hour day, that's yeah. a 10, 12, 14 hour and, day. And how are you living? Uh, so I have a second business, which is a two days a week e-commerce agency. And what does yes. that turn over? This year we'll do about £100,000. <gasps> Whoa! So you're a serial entrepreneur? Yes. And how old are you? Uh, 26. Congratulations. At 26? You know, I, I, I admire, respect young people who really got a vision. Tuka Suleiman discovers the ambitious entrepreneur has serious business credibility by running a separate venture with a six-figure turnover. Sarah Davies now wants to get down to the nitty-gritty of Rob's markup on his cerebral stimulants. So what does this sell for? What does this cost you to make? £30 for that, it's 30 servings. And that costs us to manufacture £4.50. And at the moment, you are still 100% shareholder? I'm 85% shareholder. So the other two shareholders own a branding and marketing agency. And for 15%, they contracted £130,000 worth of work to Fuelvite. So that's content creation, marketing, uh, website design. Did they do the bit that says you can't read any other writing on this packaging? Did they brand that bit? They did. I haven't heard of any struggle reading the packaging. Really? Come and read something for me off the back of this, then. Come and read that for me. 
Okay, so store in a cool place away from heat and moisture, used by the expiry date. Man Darn, he can. <laughs> Darn, he can. I would point out they are sample packaging. Well, how much of that have you got? Uh, six units in that packaging. Few, yeah. because I think the first thing you need to do is make it readable. Actually, you probably wouldn't get away with that because information that you have to have on the back of a packet yeah. has to be easily readable, not... Yeah. I mean, that is diabolical, isn't it? I can just barely read it. You can't see anything on it. I, no I note that and I'm willing to take it on board. Deborah Meaden spots a potential problem with the entrepreneur's packaging of his product. Tej Lalvani has made his millions in vitamins and health supplements. Does he have a regal welcome in mind for a possible new pretender to the throne? Rob, Tej. I happen to know a company that begins with the first three letters of this as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, you're an enterprising guy and um, you know, well done for setting something up like this, but supplements for the brain, they've been around for a very long time. Um, you know, we ourselves have got a brand which is I know it, yeah. now one of the number one supplements for cognitive function in the country. Yeah. So I don't see why this is new. So we're bringing the benefits of nootropics in different form factors to the mass market. Um, we, we do sell ours nationally in, in, in all retail outlets mm. as well, so it, it is available. I also think it's quite expensive. £30 is a lot of money for someone to spend on this. What exactly is your target market? Because there's lots of products in retail already, a lot cheaper, a third of the price than yours. So our target market would be busy professional students who are picking up an energy drink, a coffee, and one pound per serving is significantly cheaper than a coffee or an energy drink. Well, I actually wouldn't compare coffee with that. You're providing a health supplement, which is very different. But that's the only solution that's out there at the moment for customers. It's not the only solution, though, is it? Because there are a lot of competitors on the market. It's interesting, because Tej has said what he said, but he's still in. Tej is a smart man. He is a smart man, <laughs> and that's why I'm thinking here, well, if it is good, we could come out with it and go, right, get the brand point, let's call it Vitabionic. It's like superhuman, superhuman. for your brain. I'm just going to maybe sit quietly and wait to see what Tej does. Peter Jones wonders if his fellow dragon might have a surprise in store and decides to play a waiting game. But it appears Deborah Meaden isn't sold on the supplement proposition. So far from you, I haven't heard a compelling reason why this is going to succeed. I'm not keen on the branding. I've heard that the pricing isn't fantastic. I would push back on the pricing part. We are very competitively priced online. They're well okay, reviewed Rob, at their I'm, price I'm comparing point. what you're saying with the market leader. So I admire you for pushing back, and I would expect you to push back, but I'm afraid I'm going to listen to Tej. It's just not an investment for me. OK. So I'm sorry I'm out. Deborah Meaden defers to the industry experts' misgivings about the product and becomes the first dragon out. But has Sarah Davies been swayed by the acumen for business that Rob has demonstrated? You are really impressive as an entrepreneur. The bit that I feel a bit uncomfortable about is... ..if I pick this up off a shelf, mm. not only will I not pay £30, but I don't think I'd want to put them in my mouth. I don't really know what I'm eating, what I'm doing here, and I think I can overcome that when it's a really big brand. Mm. But I'm just looking and I'm thinking, it's, yeah, it's just it's just not speaking to me. So um, as great as I think you are, this one isn't an investment for me, and uh, I'm out. Sarah Davies can't get her head around Rob's brain boosters and end her interest. With Peter Jones keeping a very close eye on proceedings, market leader Tej Lalvani is ready to give his final verdict on his potential competitor's product. Look, um, I just think that this market is very competitive right now. You haven't got anything that's unique. And when you go to retail, you're going to have a lot of competition. Absolutely, yeah. And it's um, going to be tough to stand out. Possibly in the UK, but we have... Um, the product approved to sell in Germany, France and the US, which are the other three largest nootropic markets. 
US has got a thousand products in retail already. So I think you're going to find it tough in America. Germany is a very tough market to enter. It's a very different market to the UK. So look, I think you're a good business for yourself online. I don't want to deter you because it's good for the market and people yeah. to understand about it. But I'm going to say I'm out. Okay, Tej, thank you. So Rob, I think um, you happened to pick the very business today um, of somebody that rules the roost when it comes to that marketplace. And I had to listen to what he said. Mm. So on the back of specifically Tej's feedback, it's not going to be something that I'm going to put my money into. So I'm going to say I'm out. Peter Jones follows Tej Lalvani's lead and exits the discussion. Tuka Suleiman is now the entrepreneur's only hope for investment. Is his brain fizzing with a possible offer? Rob. It's on you, Tuka. Oh. Don't worry. I'm not influenced by other dragons. I'm Tuka. My own dragon. I really, really like you. Yes. And it's very apparent that there's a brand there. Um, and, and I like it. And I like to give other dragons a bit of a run for their money, right? The market is big enough for everybody. The market's so, huge. I'm going to make you an offer. But it comes at a price. I'm going to give you all of the money, that's £45,000, but I want 40% of the business. Still gives you control, but more than that, you will have the greatest experience of your life working with me. I don't doubt that. It's a lot more than what I Do you want to go and think about today. it? The back wall? I, I've done a lot of thinking before I've come in the den. Um, it, I can't push that high. I can't push near that high. The absolute most I could go to is 20%. So if you take me on 20%, we have a deal. No, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what it is. There's a lot to do here. And I'm not offering you just a passion investment where yeah. I see you once a month and mentor you. I'm offering you much more than you could ever imagine. Mm. I do appreciate that. So I do appreciate I, I, I would, the least I'd go to is 35%, and that's my last offer. I do have belief in myself, but I also have a lot of belief in this brand and where we can take it. So I can't give away that much. I think that for what's involved and what I'm offering, my offer's fair. You've got one last chance to think about it. You've got five seconds to change your mind. I can't change my okay. mind, I'm afraid. Well, on that basis, thank unfortunately, you. I'm out. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Good luck. Good luck, Rob. Thanks, Good luck. Thank you. Entrepreneur and investor are too far apart and Rob leaves the den without the £45,000 he was seeking or a dragon to supercharge his setup. When Tuka made me an offer, it seemed like a lifesaver. But it was a dagger to the heart when he said 40%. Oh, it's really good that you made him an offer. I, th I think he's a smart guy. Well, I was backing him. However, he was narrow-minded. You had a chance to compete against me, Tuka, but you didn't do it. It wasn't the day for the brand, but I'm absolutely going to make this a success, and I'm more than willing to take Tej or anybody else on in this sector.